How's it going everyone? We're here to check out this month's update and it is a big one. Uh, it adds in a whole new underground train dungeon system and we'll be getting to that. So uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But we're going to cover a couple of other little things first. There have some, been some bug fixes and so forth. Like, for instance, the outposts should no longer spawn in the snow. That should help people starting out not freeze to death constantly when trying to get their stuff back uh, from the uh, new softcore mode or just in general, just, you know, trying to do some easy early trades and so forth. Uh, also, they have done a lot of fixes to various bugs uh, like neon signs blocking windows, uh, the fridge having excessively large building prevent area, swimming pool being used for exploits, uh, and... One of the things is a new little addition. You can put a small box underneath a mixing table now. So yeah, you can you know put either way. It's up to you. But boom, there it is. So that's a nice little addition right there. In addition to that, we also have a few other things. And uh, the Rust has made this handy little thing on the blog, which I think is quite cool. And uh, these are the improvement and fixes highlight, which I thought was quite nice. So these are kind of things that, you know, it's kind of hard to show in game. So th uh, the healing third person animations uh, are back now. So you can actually see someone pull out the syringe and med someone or pull out bandage and so forth. The oil rig RF constantly uh, sending out a frequency has been fixed. Uh, horses have a little bit smoother uh, movement again. I showed you the mixing table. Uh, drones have a flat fee for per delivery instead of per item, which is much more reasonable. Uh, we mentioned the monument uh, with the compounds not spawning in the snow. Uh, there's a nice puzzle reset, so if people leave half uh, empty stuff, it won't stop it from resetting, which is beautiful. And I almost completely forgot to mention these last two, which was the substation radiation has now been removed. So now you can head into those without a rad suit and continue on your scrapping ways. And the skin picker, um, the last or the most recent skin that you keep using will show up as your first in the front. So that way, if you have a billion skins like I do, it just kind of helps you uh, use your common ones more often. So that's a nice little addition there. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at everything else in this update. The big thing this month is going to be the train system. So around the map, you will find next to pretty much most monuments, this freight transit line system or ftl <laughs> gotta love that little pun there and uh yeah you'll see these and it basically has a stairwell system here and it will tell you okay this goes to the elevator or you can actually go here call an elevator which will take quite a bit of a time you can see that's very very far down or you can choose to go ahead and uh run down the whole thing we're gonna go ahead and wait for the elevator here for a second and uh, ride it down just so you kind of get the idea of how far this really is. Uh, I was gonna pause it, but you know what? It's pretty much almost here. So uh, this is also something you'll probably wanna bring a flashlight and a gun and some meds to. Uh, just for purposes of the fact that I'm showing this video, I'm, you know, gonna be in God mode. Also, there's lots of little hidey nooks and stuff, guys. Like, for instance, you can climb up into this one here. And there's a vent that comes up ugh, out the back door. So yeah, there's kind of, you know, there's lots of little, little features to this that uh, you can hide in. So I can definitely see a lot of people running into some issues here. But as you can see, we got that going on. Now you can have it stop at every floor if you want, but I mean, probably don't want that. And yeah, like I said, this is a long ride. Now, one thing people are asking, since we have such big elevators, can we now have them uh, for our bases higher than uh, what it, what's the limit right now? And the problem with that is uh, there's a big difference between a procedurally generated uh, static object like this and then something that can be player built. So right now, of course, they'll always try to work on whatever limitations they can, but it looks like it's probably staying at that. As we're talking down the elevator here, Oh, uh, actually, before we head into this next area, I'd also like to go ahead and mention there are NPCs in here, so that's why you want to put a gun. So these guys are the tunnel dwellers. There's also loot here. There's actually quite a few of them. Now, what these guys have on them are kind of like basic loot stuff. So, you know, we'll take a look at the bodies here as we go. 
There's also toolboxes that will spawn down here. You see they have all their like little dwelling spaces in here and stuff. Oh, that's a pretty moldy banana. <laughs> there we go. Mm, that guy had two blades. And as you can see, it's kind of like a real winding system. So once you get to the end, you'll know because there's two doors left and right and they go to the same place. You pretty much just want to choose a side. You know, maybe someone isn't camping this one. And you can go ahead and take your elevator again. So this one's actually here. So, hey, we'll go ahead and take the elevator. This is usually not more than like two, I'd say three or four floors, actually. So there we go. That was three. And now you are off into the main area. And there's definitely some more NPCs around here. There we go. There's also chances of loot around here. So you can see there's some toolboxes, more toolboxes, and a green box. Some more guys all around there. Brown box and the toolbox. Again, you can see their loot. You know, it's all kind of, you know, nothing too OP, but definitely not bad loot. So usually there should be a cart parked at either one of the ends or the other. So this is the work cart itself. To repair these, you're gonna need some metal frags. So you wanna make sure it's at a thousand, which it looks like this one is. And uh, there's two entry points to it. You can either climb up the ladder here on the side or you can climb up the ladder on the front. And there we go. Usually you can kind of just jump into it as well. You'll notice there's little uh, like barricades you can hide behind. Now you are gonna to have to watch its health as it goes around. Here's the fuel, it can hold 500. And then you basically just go ahead and mount it. So once you're in here, your controls are basically uh, W and S and sometimes A and D. A and D are gonna be changing tracks. So A is gonna be going left, D is gonna be uh, changing to the right, and then W is gonna be forward and S is gonna be backwards. So you hit W once to start up. You can see there's our fuel and so forth and uh, it's powered up, lights are on. Hit one more time to move forward in a low speed. One more time for medium. One more for high. Then you hit S to go back. And then once you hit zero, hitting S again will go ahead and put you into reverse, low, medium, and high. And W to go back to zero again. And as you can see, it takes a moment, so you want to kind of calculate that ahead of time. Now, here is one of the coolest parts. It has its entire own map system. And you can see it goes around the map really well. This is a 4.5K map, so you're pretty standard size, okay? Uh, or actually, no, this one's 5,000, I think. It's one, one or the other, close enough. One way or another, you can see it goes all the way around, and then you see these little train markers are where they stop, and you can see they're pretty much at every monument. So there is something new going on at Bandit Camp. So we're gonna go ahead and actually reverse on this track and try to head on over to our goal of Bandit Camp over here. So that's actually pretty cool. You can go into reverse. So here we are. And now you can see we're going the appropriate way. And actually, you know what? This experience might be a little bit better, I realize, if we maybe just ride a cart that's facing the right way. Oh, that scared me. Yep. All right, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a second here. Okay, now they're quiet. All right, let's get a cart going the right direction. That way we can kind of, you know, experience this together. So here we go. Now we're going the right way. Go ahead and put on that high throttle. And now that the train's going, you can actually jump out and uh, do stuff on the platform if you like. And there's actually going to be these sections here where these guys actually create barricades for you. So bam. Oh, we just passed through that one. And uh, we're going to actually stop here. 
and you'll see your cart starts to take quite a bit of damage. You're probably going to want to avoid that. Now, these guys had a pretty high spawn rate. I don't know if that got toned down or not, but you definitely probably don't want to charge headfirst in here like I did in God Mode. Uh, it's not going to go off too well for you. But yeah, you can see they actually set up these barricades here. And you'll hear that kind of alarm will go off. And uh, yeah, there's just little loot all around here too. So it's worth stopping, honestly. I mean, look, a green box right here. Just got a hazzy. Got a brown box right here. <laughs> Some flippers, I guess. All right, that maybe that's not as great. But, you know, we've got a couple bodies to loot. Here's another toolbox. Another regular box. I like to call these just regular boxes. You guys know what I mean. Brown box, whatever. So, yeah, you can see there's, you know, a bit of stuff going on here. Now that they've been dead for a little bit, probably want to repair this. Get her back up to 100. Or 1,000. Well, 100%, but 1,000 health is, you know, what it has there. And now we can continue on our track here. Looks like we're coming through another station, so we're probably gonna get shot at a little bit. Oh, no, maybe not. That one didn't seem to turn around in time. But now we should be hitting that curve of the tunnel pretty soon. Yeah, there it goes. All right, so now we have, it's probably gonna go this way or that way. Uh-oh, we're getting a warning. All right, we're just gonna plow through this one. Keep going, keep going. Oh, one barricade, ow. Oh, we're getting shot. There's no windshield, guys, so you take direct hits. Oof. I did some damage, but we're still going, we're still going. All right, so once we come around this next curve, we're gonna actually want to hang right. So hopefully, oh, that guy just got wrecked. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's see, hopefully we have an option to. Here it comes. Yep, we're gonna hold D. Yep, and that kept us on this track. All right, and then once we get up here a little bit, you'll see we're going to want to hold uh, A to turn left once we start to approach Bandit Camp. But I think we're going to actually slow down here for a sec. Actually, you know what? We can keep going. Jump out. Boom. There we go. We don't want to miss our turn. Hold A. You see a little arrow show up on the screen there? We've now made our turn. And you can see here's the station coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in low. Cause we probably have some NPCs. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it's not exactly the safest, you know? Might take a little bit, but now they're, oh, there's another one. You definitely want to bring meds and have guns. So again, lots of loot around here. You'll see now it says bandit camp. So we want to go ahead and find our door. Here it is, it says exit. And we can go ahead and head on in here. Looks like the elevator is already waiting for us. And then, once you get here, unless someone else already did it recently, you're going to have to fight your way through the tunnels here, too. So, this is, you know, something you want to kind of consider. That you're going to have to fight your way through the NPCs. Alright, so here we are. So, there it is. FTL. So, what do you guys think of that transit, uh, the, the transit, transit line? And as you can see on the map, it shows up as these little train icons. And uh, yeah, they tried doing the name and it, and then they were bigger and this and that. And I think these look really nice with just the train icon. I think everyone should know, you know, the train is a train. <laughs> that should be pretty straightforward. But the other little feature we have... Uh, oh, I'm still hostile. Uh, I guess we should probably wait for that. Oh, okay, and it just ended. Never mind. So we'll pop on into Bandit Town. And there's some new gambling in town, some slot machines. Now there's only three so far, and uh, these aren't player built, you can't make them yourself or anything, they're only here, just like the roulette wheel. But you got three of them here, and uh, once you hop on into it, you can see your stakes up here. So uh, whatever you roll is what you can get. If you get that sweet, sweet 777 jackpot, 1500 scrap, that's uh, pretty sweet. 
So once you're up on the machine, you can access it. This is where your winnings will show up. Up here is how much scrap you want to go ahead and put in. So we'll go ahead and just put in the entire thing. This gives us 500 spins. It's two per. And uh, then you just pull away. Oh yeah, we got five scrap. So actually, wow, we, we started off better than uh, I thought. Oh, no, now we lost that already. So, yeah, I can see a lot of people sitting here at the Bandit Camp. Ooh, oh. Sitting here spending a lot of scrap. Uh, definitely seems like you... I don't know. The odds feel a lot better on the roulette wheel to me for some reason. But maybe that's because how quickly this goes. But then when the lights come up and everything, you feel so special. But, uh... Yeah. Oops. Uh, hello? Can I access my thing? There we go. <laughs> Deposit. So, yeah, there you go. You hold E, and you can go back in and take your stuff back. So, hey, we, we basically <laughs> didn't do very much there. <laughs> not, not exactly the best, but definitely fun. Another little addition a lot of people ask for. It. There's also card games in the works, guys. So, uh, keep an eye out for that. I'm hoping maybe that means we'll be able to set these tables or something. Uh, that would be really, really cool. But uh, they haven't said what card games, but I'm assuming, you know, Blackjack or, you know, poker or something i, I don't know <laughs> texas hold them we'll have to it'll be something like that so i imagine but uh that's pretty much the big stuff for this update guys so go gamble and then take a ride on the train and see where it takes you thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out for that skin video it should be out soon go work on those twitch drops and stay rusty one last uh, little thing before we go rust console edition you guys have been asking so much for it well, they had quite a few delays due to, you know, the pandemic and everything else, switching working from home and such, but they have come out and popped up the website. So there's a little trailer you can watch and you can sign up for the beta. So here you go, guys. There it is. And uh, there you go. Uh, it's finally in a state where they're going to be ready to test it soon. Now, I do not know the date of when the beta will roll out exactly, and it's also under an NDA, so even if you get in, you can't record it and share it, and so forth. They have even said that even though it doesn't technically break the NDA, they would prefer you don't even share that you got in. That's how kind of tight-lipped they want to be about it right now. So go ahead and uh, check that out, and do remember, it is not Face Punch that is doing the console port. It is Double Eleven Studio. They are the ones that are doing it, so be sure to follow them. Their Twitter's right here, their Facebook as well, and uh, you know that's where you can get the information from them. It is not the actual Rust devs. This is a port, so there's a port company working, working on it. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. So go check it out and uh, see if you get in the beta.